Welcome everyone to this data analysis of my journey in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Link event. I tracked the data of all 47 duels I played between the 14th of October and the 17th of October. In this time period I played the Link Regulation Duel event competitively and tried to climb the ladder as far as possible. Let's start this analysis with a look at all the decks I came across. Tri Brigade and Marinsis make up more than a quarter of all decks. This was expected, since Tri Brigade has been a tiered deck for a long time and got into this event at nearly full power. Marinsis just got a wave of new support, see what I did there? Its ability to consistently end on a tower and an in archetype impermanence, most certainly played a role for people to pick this deck. The next 30% of the pie chart are occupied by Crusadia, Live Twin, and Sky Striker. Crusadia is the best going second OTK strategy in the event, so it is unsurprising to see it up here. Live Twin and Sky Striker are two pure Link Waifu strategies and thus obviously a popular pick. Side note, Waifu decks make up about 40% of all decks I faced. Surprising to me was, that I only faced you Link strategies three times. Although this number probably increases in higher ranks. I started at gold rank by the way, but more on this topic later. So now let's see how I performed. My first deck of choice was Unchained. I thought the ability to link away the opponent's Link monster during their turn and my turn would be pretty good. This was true during the start of the event, when I was in lower ranks. The deck struggled with the loss of draw power, since the pot cards were banned. This led to grind game problems versus the top midrange decks. Unchained also dies to Max C and sometimes even to Nibiru, when you aim for the final blow. Since my win rate with Unchained dwindled I decided to switch to Sky Strikers. This turned out to be rather unsuccessful. It felt like everyone and their mom was prepared for the Sky Striker matchup. But I have to admit it is really fun to use Widow Anchor or Shark Cannon on whatever linked monster you need to climb to access Goad Talker. Anyways, after the realization that Sky Striker was not it, I decided to channel my inner monkey and go full Unga Bunga with Crusadia. Armed with a lot of Caius I felt prepared for most matchups and I was able to close out games fast. Except for a few wild ones and brick festivals. This led to an overall win rate of 48.9%. Which is a little disappointing and frustrating for me. Especially since I want the diamond border so bad. But I realized to get to diamond 1 would be a grindy mess. And so I stopped playing this event competitively after 3 days and 47 games. Ok let's just move on towards my personal rank progression. I started the event at gold 5 and managed to reach platinum in 34 games. My highest rank in this time period was platinum 4 at 39 games. I managed to rank up at a rate of 1.16 rank ups every 10 games. Looking back, this rate is not as bad as it felt while playing it. The threat of deranking really took some of the fun away from me. You can actually see very well why I decided to stop playing Sky Striker. I only got one rank up in 10 games and I expected to get a climb rate similar to the first 11 unchained games. Here I climbed 3 ranks in 10 games. With Crusadia it took me 14 games to climb 3 ranks, while actually being at the highest rank I have been before. Another interesting metric is how many turns did a duel last. This information will later help us discussing the time investments. We would expect to see, that Crusadia would have the least number of turns per duel on average, because it's an OTK strategy. But acutely it is Unchained, who needs the lowest amount of turns to end a duel with 4.4 on average, while Crusadia comes in at a close second with 4.5. Sky Striker in dead last was to be expected, since it is a control deck. It is interesting to see that the three longest duels were all played with the Crusadia deck and all were longer than 12 turns. 5 out of 21 Crusadia duels ended on turn 2 and all of them were wins. This implies, that my OTK success rate was about 24%. All in all the average duel took 5.2 turns to finish. Let's go back towards the topic of time investment. With the current data we can predict how much play time it would take to reach the highest rank. Providing my climb rate is constant at 0.116 ranks per duel, I would need another 72 matches to reach Diamond 1. If we assume, that the average time per turn is 2 minutes and an average duel has 5.2 turns, we can calculate, that another 12.4 hours of playtime is needed to reach Diamond 1. Therefore I needed to play a little more than an hour per day, to reach Diamond 1 until the event ends. This actually sounds manageable, doesn't it? The problem is that the climb rate probably won't stay constant the more you climb games will become progressively harder and more competitive. Thus the actual time investment may be a lot higher than what was given by the linear model. Maybe a logarithm might be a better fit function for data like this. But that's a topic for another video. The final question is, which deck performed the best according to our data? Unchained performed very well in the lower gold ranks, while taking the least turns to end a duel. It managed to rank up 3 times in 11 duels, which is the best rate of any deck. But it struggled a bit more after reaching gold too. All in all a solid deck choice. 4 out 5 stars. Sky Striker felt a little frustrating to pilot. 
Duels took nearly seven turns on average and the reward felt lackluster with only one rank up in nine games and the lowest overall win rate. But I have to admit that nine games played in total is probably not enough to gather meaningful data. Still three out of five stars. The star of the show was Crusadia, who got me to Platinum 4 and out of LO Hell and Gold 2. Crusadia managed to help me climb three times in 14 duels, while having an okay overall win rate. Its time inexpensive OTK playstyle felt refreshing and effective. The average turns per duel might even be at under 4, if I surrendered some of the long games earlier. Overall I think the deck overperformed, considering I don't even own a Vermax and thus don't have a game plan when going first. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I hope you guys had as much fun watching, as I had with over-analyzing this questionable data. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.